Hello, hello, friends, and a very happy Thursday to you today. I hope everyone is doing well. I hope you're enjoying your day. Uh, as far as you are into it uh, here in Germany, we're at the end of our day. So it's been a good one, I can tell you so far. We've even got a little bit of spring weather. So it's a little bit of something to look forward to. And hopefully the same is true where you are. Hopefully you're having a great day so far. Welcome to today's Alta New Live. My name is Sarah. I'm really happy that you are joining today. I'm going to switch over here and see who has joined us. Quite a lot of folks are joining us today. Hi, Avril. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Tina. Hi, Ziamara. Jennifer, Carol. Wonderful to see everybody. And the lovely Mary is with us today. She is behind the Alta New badge. So, hi, Mary. Uh, Mary will be keeping us up to date on all of the various things that I'm mentioning. And she has also already mentioned that um, if you share today's live, while we're live, you can be in for a $15 gift certificate to the Alta New store. So all you need to do is share um, the live. We'll be going for about an hour, so you can share it any time during that time. And then post in the comments down below or to the side or wherever, wherever they are for you, and just let us know that you shared and how you shared. And then Mary will take it from there. So you could be in for $15 at the Alta New store. So hmm, what's in your what's on your wish list? I've got a one that's about a mile long. And I will show you something, something that I just got from Alta New, which is really cool. And you'll laugh when you see this. All right, so um, a big welcome to everybody who's joining us. You probably already know what we're going to be talking about today. It is the beautiful Botanical Gardens stamp set. So this is a really fun set. This is not new, so maybe some of you already have this. This is a really sweet really nice what i consider kind of classic all to new it's not a layering stamp set as you can see but it's really nice outline designs it's got a bit of a whimsical look to it i think it's quite nice for um springtime cards and other paper crafts of course there is also the coordinating die set to go along so you can do some really fun layering with these things so great fun to have these. So the Botanical Garden stamp and die set, that's going to be our focus today. But I'm also using the Woodless Watercolor Pencils. Now, again, these are also something that you may have in your craft stash. So we'll talk about what these are, how to use them, why I love them, <laughs> why you probably love them if you have them too. Uh, let us know what you think. You know, if you have some of these items that I am using, do let us know what you think of them because we always like to, we always like to know, we always like to share information and tips and different ways that you're using these supplies. So if that sounds good to you guys, then I will go ahead and change the camera angle and we can get into our crafting. So a big hello to everybody. I see. Oh, Lisa, you love those pencils. I want to know why. Tell us why. Um, looks like lots of folks are sharing already. So that is fantastic. Thank you. Oh, hi, Sue. Hi, Erica. Thanks for sharing. Fantastic. Nice to see everybody. Okay. So I'm going to change over the camera. And then we can see what's on my work surface. Oh, here, there's my tea. We'll get that out of the way. And we can start to take a look here at our stamps and what we can do with these. So as I mentioned, it's a really nice, kind of a whimsical, uh, casual design. It looks beautiful if you're just stamping in, you know, plain black ink and coloring in with any different kinds of mediums. So you've got a lot of options with these. If I flip it over, you can see some of these designs. Really, really sweet, I think. Just really nice, um, nice open areas and they give you lots of possibility. Okay, so we're going to be combining them with our watercolor pencils. Now these are woodless, um, which some people kind of go, well then what, wait, what does that mean? Woodless, how does that work? 
So let me just show you. Um, I'll move this aside. So you've got 24 colors in here. So you've got quite a lot of them. You also have this little foam guy in here, which I always hang on to just so that I can stick it back in here so they don't knock around into each other. You do want to be a little careful with these. So just take care you don't drop them and um, you know they can break that way because they don't have that wood casing around them. Other than that, I mean, there's they're not precious. You don't have to handle them with kid gloves. But when you're talking about a woodless uh, watercolor pencil versus a regular pencil, colored pencil, so here's one, I think it's my daughter's, and you'll notice that there is wood around the pigment of the, of the pencil. You do not have that with the woodless watercolor pencils. So instead, this is like a stick of pigment essentially and there's like a kind of a film casing on here which just means that you're getting a really great value you're also getting some really intense color in here and I'll show you a couple of different ways you can um, paint with these okay so kind of roll these all off to the side here wonderful of course all to new colors we love all their colors and uh, let's get to stamping so I'm going to grab my Misty for this and let's take a look at just some simple stamping here. So I'm going to take some, this is not watercolor cardstock, but it's a nice sturdy white cardstock. And um, if I'm using watercolor or any kind of watery medium, I always like to have cardstock on hand that's just uh, a little bit sturdier and smooth it kind of does the trick there so i've got my cardstock all sorted in place and i'm going to do a little bit of a background on here and then i'm going to do some flowers so two of the i guess you would call them sort of filler um filler florals like when you get a bouquet from the florist you know when you get all of those bouquets given to you from various people in your lives um, you'll often get in your dozen red roses some filler pieces in here so baby's breath or so on and these are really nice for um, creating a lot more movement and variety on your cards as well I was just trying to think when the last time was that someone gave me a bouquet of red roses it's been a long time I should go give them to myself so I'm going to pull these guys off here, and I'm going to use these as the background of my card, and then I'll start building up from there. So I'm going to pop this one down here like so, and then angle this guy over here. And I've got a plan for what I'm doing down here at the bottom, so I'll have a little bit of space open kind of down here at the bottom of this piece. Okay, so close this up. And I'm going to work with my um, obsidian, oops, obsidian black ink. Now, you guys know me. You know that I love my obsidian black ink. I use this pretty much, oh, I don't know, would I say every day, pretty close. So this is my kind of go-to black ink. This is the one that I use for getting a nice crisp look. And because it's a pigment ink and it's oil-based, it's going to work really nicely in partnership with any water-based medium. So if you're working with dye ink and you add water, you know that you can end up with kind of a blurry situation. So let me show you this. Now my ink pad, I have to say, I was telling Lydia the other day, it's getting a little tired. <laughs> I think it needs, I either need a replacement after however many years of using this daily or some re-inker. So I like to, to do this twice. There we go. So now I've got my nice image on here. And I'm just going to clean this up. And then take this off and I'll do a little bit of coloring. Okay. Pull these off but you can see it's a really simple a sweet little design and just whimsical and and fun I think so actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this aside 
I'm going to stamp a couple of other elements on here just while I've got the ink and everything out. And then we can start putting things together. So I'm going to grab a butterfly. Now there are two butterflies on here. One that's the like open wing butterfly and then a second one that's sort of going in profile. I'm going to take the profile butterfly and then this large image down here at the bottom. So this is a, a nice big a couple of inches floral motif with some leaves, which is really nice. And I'll just pop these down here. I know I want to die cut them, so I'm not too worried about where they go on my paper, other than that they, there's enough room around them that I can get um, my die on there. So of course, there are coordinating dies to go along with this set that just make everything so much easier. What did we do in the days before coordinating stamp and die sets? We did a lot of fussy cutting, didn't we? Okay, let me get an, another pass on here. Come on, Obsidian, I know you're tired. This is the ink pad. I think I've used this ink pad maybe every day is a bit of an exaggeration, but certainly for all of my Altenew projects, which I've done quite a lot. So I think it I think it does deserve a little bit of a break. Okay, so we'll get enough of this on here and then we can start doing our coloring. Okay. So hope everybody is still doing well. And having a great day so far, having a good day. Okay, and I'm just clean, I'm just misting these with water and then using a, an old rag to kind of clean that off and that's gonna be good to go for now. Okay, so now I've got my two pieces here. I've got my large flower, my little butterfly, and then I've got my background piece here. So my plan is that I'll color this, color these, color this, and the butterfly, and then die cut those pieces and kind of create a little um, scene around here. So let's start with the large flower. And for this, I'm going to use orange cream. Let's see, here's the orange cream. And I think I also want to do a little bit of crimson in here. So I've got a lot of nice reds in here. There's heartbeat, I think this one's crimson. Yeah, and the crimson. So there are a couple of different ways that you can color with your woodless watercolor pencils. Of course, you can just color straight onto your cardstock. So you can go like that and you can leave it like this. You don't have to add water to it if you don't want to. Or you can then take a water brush, and blend that color out. So it really is a nice, rich, intense color. And that was the crimson that I was using just there. So that's one option. The other option that you have is to get a water brush uh, or a paintbrush to get it a little bit wet on the tip and then just pick up the color from the tip. So you're going sort of tip to tip, and then use that to color in your image. Now, because I'm working with that lovely but very tired obsidian ink, um, I don't have to worry about the black line smudging or smearing or going lots of different directions, which is what I want. So I want to keep a nice crisp image even if I'm going across the lines like so. This is the orange cream and I just love how vibrant this is. This gives you a lot of really nice color really quickly. Okay, so I'm going to add a few touches to my butterfly too. We'll just give him or her some color here. Then I'm just going to clean off my brush a little bit and I can come back in again. This is with the crimson 
this is still a little bit wet on here. So while it's wet, why don't I just add in a little bit more color in some of the darker areas here, just to highlight some of those shadow areas around the center of the flower. And of course you can do as much or as little as you want. You just want to pay attention to whatever kind of cardstock you've got. If it's starting to um, rebel against you, maybe it's it's too light of a cardstock weight, but watercolor cardstock or something like a mixed media cardstock will do the trick really nicely. Okay, so I've got some nice color on here. Really simple to use these pencils. So don't feel like um, you have to handle them in a certain particular way. They're really, really easy to use. Really, really easy to use. Okay, so I'll add in a little bit of color here. Of course, you can lighten this as much as you want to. So that's with those two colors. Now for my leaves. Let's see. Ah, there it is. This is my favorite one. It's called Limeade. I just really like this color. And again, same process for my leaves. I can just pick this up and dab in some color. Now, as with anything you, you're doing that requires um, some dry time before you do your die cutting, I really recommend that you either heat set this or let it air dry. It doesn't take very long to dry, but you want to make sure that before you pop your die down in place and then you run this through your die cutting machine, that it is totally, totally dry. Otherwise, it can be a little tricky or it can actually, you know, kind of rip into your, your paper as well. So through the magic of television, <laughs> I've got, I've got pieces that are already dry and die cut. So I've got my flower and I've got my little butterfly. I think he's so sweet. I just love that little butterfly. There was a comment I just saw, hold on a second. Who was it? Who said, Oh, Naomi, you really, really like the butterflies too. I just think they're so sweet and they are playful and whimsical and they're a nice size as well too so it's going to make a nice accent okay so then for the rest of my card here we can just continue with the same process to color in the rest of this and this will be quick quick because of course there's not quite as much to color in here so i'm just dabbing this color into the flowers again a little bit of this lime aid. Let's see where my towel is. Some lime aid. Now, of course, if you wanted to, you can go right in and color those, just like you would with a regular colored pencil. And you could do both. You know, you could do both on the same plant if you want to. It'll give you varying degrees of color. So feel free to play with how much of the color you use, how you apply it. It's easy peasy. And of course, because it's all to new, you know you're getting some really beautiful colors that will go with your other colors too. That's always a nice thing, is that you've got a nice coordinating set. Okay, so now I've got my background on here. And I want to start building up. But before I do anything, I like to give a little splatter to my background. And there's a wonderful color in here. Now I have to find it. There's some really nice darker shades. Paper bag, that wasn't it. Ah, here we go. I may be mispronouncing this when I say it's oolong tea. So if somebody knows the correct pronunciation, um, this is. A nice one for doing some simple spattering. Same process. I'm just going to pick up a bit of the color on here and then just give a bit of a splatter. Now you may want to go easy on the water to colored pencil proportion 
just when you're splattering it first because of course we know with water it can sometimes get a little bit everywhere so do take care with that i'm going to mop this up just quickly here and then what i can do is take my flower and add it down here at the bottom and my butterfly like so now you can glue them down just the way they come you can also give them a little bit of depth and dimension and to do that this is the thing that i wanted to show you when i opened the box and i saw this i just cracked up i'd said oh some you know some of your foam tape would be great it's huge it's it's like a it's like a wheel <laughs> the size of a wheel so this is what i'm using to add some dimension onto my flower and my butterfly so as soon as everything is dry i will pop those on there and let me show you actually one other thing that i've done on here is edging around the outside edge of my cardstock piece again with a little bit of color so once again, I'm gonna get my water brush wet. And this is again using that beautiful orange. And then just run that along the edges. Now you can angle in your brush if you want to, if you want to have a little bit more color on there. That is also a possibility. And then that will give you a really cool kind of watercolor effect along those edges. So after I've done all of this and it's all dry and ready to go, then this is what I've come up with. So here I've got my foam taped uh, butterfly and flower. I've got some edging around the outside here. Got that really beautiful T, however you say it. I'm pronouncing it oolong, but that may be incorrect. Um, splattering on here just gives a really, really fun effect. So that is a quick and easy way you can create a very simple and sweet card using your woodless watercolor pencils and your beautiful botanical prints. So that's our first one. Now I've got another card project that I want to show you. And this one is going to involve um, the obsidian black ink and also some clear embossing powder. Um, this is <laughs> this is clear embossing powder. It's in a different jar um, because I had a bit of an accident with my one of my jars of embossing powder. So I've got my clear embossing powder on there, and I'm going to use my obsidian to do some embossing. So I'm going to move aside some of these things here. Move aside my card. And I'm going to grab once again another piece of smooth white cardstock. Oh, Nancy says I am pronouncing it correctly. Thank you. I'm really glad. That's good to hear in case I ever want to order it in a cafe or something. Okay, so oolong tea for the splatter. Thank you, Nancy. Now for the next one, I'm gonna do a little bit of heat embossing to create a resist for my watercolor pencils. So I'm going to grab this beautiful little flower here. This is one that I really think has a super fun, whimsical, playful look, but it can also, when you're using it just singly and you add in some embossing, you can get some really fun looks. Okay, so I've got that in place. And what I'm going to do is use my obsidian pigment ink as my embossing ink because it's a pigment ink so it can also do the job as a, um, an embossing ink and my clear embossing powder so i've got that ready to go i've got a piece of scrap paper here do i yes i do there we go and we will take a look at this so have my embossing powder ready to go it's always the the race against time with our inks and our embossing powder so again i'm going to put this embossing or put our obsidian black to the test but i think we can do it okay stamp this and let's do one more go 
here. Alrighty. Okay, and then quickly, I'm going to take this out, pop it inside, and I'm going to add my clear embossing powder on here. Now, I like this technique because it gives us the look of black embossing powder, but you don't have to worry, and this is nice if you're working on an all-white background or a very light background, you don't have to worry about those stray little black embossing powder particles that inevitably, no matter how careful you are, inevitably get onto an area where you don't want them, and then they get heat set. <laughs> Not sure how that happens. It's, it's the Murphy's Law, or one of them, of stamping. Okay, I'm just gonna pop the lid back on here and clean up my flower. before I go on to heat setting. And then we'll see how this looks and we'll add some of our watercolor on there. Okay, so pull that off. Now I'm working on my um, Altenew craft mat, which is heat resistant. So it's a good thing to have on hand when you're doing your embossing. Okay, so I've got my embossing tool at the ready. So give me a second and we'll heat set this and see how it looks. Okay, so now I've got my embossed flower. And the nice thing about this is that it instantly, I don't know, there's something about embossing, that it instantly brings a, another, I don't know if it's a level of formality to, a, to an image, but it does sort of make it extra special. So the nice thing is that you could use this just as it is. I think it'd be really pretty on like a black and white color combination style of card, but you can also use the raised edges of the embossing as your resist. So here's what I mean. Um, again, I've got my water brush markers or whatever kind of paintbrush you've got on hand. And then I've also got, this is the Coral Bliss. And once again, I'm just going to pick up some of the color on here and just apply that right on here. Now I can, of course, go over the edges because that is going to be my resist. I can kind of come into some of these areas here too. This is the Coral Bliss, which is a really nice, soft, um, soft and gentle pink, almost a little bit, well, it's coral. I was gonna, going to say like a salmon pink. It's not a really pinky pink. It's just such a beautiful color. And again, I can leave it like so. I can also add in, let's see, is this heartbeat? Yeah, pick up some heartbeat while this is still wet and just add a little bit more like maybe around the edges. Super simple to do. No painting skills required whatsoever, which is the nice thing. It does definitely make things feel foolproof. Okay, and then what for the leaves? Let's do, I won't go for my favorite limeade. I'll use grass field for the, for the leaves here. Same process. And there we go. Just tap in a bit of that color. Super duper easy to do. And the nice thing is because this is such a sort of playful design, you can 
keep things really fluid in the sense of your coloring. So you don't have to go all the way to the edges. It doesn't have to be 100% perfect. You can let some of the white come around the edges on there. I'm just gonna blot a little bit of this. There we go. So that you've got some shine and some color on here. Yes, and I see a comment that yes, you could paint it red for a Beauty and the Beast Rose card, absolutely. And in fact, I'm so glad you mentioned that because I did do a similar version. Now this is not heat embossed, but it is using the Obsidian Black. And you can kind of see the difference between the raised edges around here. And this is a little bit more opaque, but the red looks gorgeous. And I think I used um, Ruby Red. So this is another of the red colors in combination with the Crimson. So when you look at the two pencil colors like this, they look very similar. But we all know that there are lots of variety uh, varieties in between those shades of colors with all to new so yes absolutely go pink go red whatever color you want your rose to be now with this one i've got a finished card project here that i've done and i've added really only very simple matting on here and a thanks die you guys know you, you, you should know by now at some point I'm going to work in the signature words die set because this is a set that I, I adore. I use this so often. So I've got the thanks die on here. Super simple to just pop that down and it creates a really nice effect on here. So that, and it also coordinates nicely with the raised edges of that um, embossing. And then I've got some gold embroidery thread on here. This is the antique, no, sorry, enchanted gold. And I've just wrapped it around the base, which is normally how I do this. Wrap it around twice, secure it on the back with some tape, and then separately tie the bow and glue the bow on there. So. Um, sometimes people say, oh, I can never get it. So I tie a bow and then wrap it around. Me either. Can't do it either. That's why I do the two of them separately. So then I've just got that wrapped around there. Super simple, really easy. So that is our second uh, project or our second technique that you can combine with these. Now, speaking of embossing, let's go to another embossing design. And my embossing tool all to the ready today. So let's see here. I've got another one of these really beautiful floral designs that I want to show you. I think I've got pencils everywhere, powders everywhere. It's just so much fun. Now with this one, I'm going to um, stamp and emboss, I guess you'd say the traditional way. So I'm using my clear embossing ink and I'm going to also use the rose gold embossing powder. And this is a color that I love. As you can see, I've got not very much left in here in my little pot, but it makes a beautiful uh, floral accent. And again, embossing just seems to dress anything up. So I'm going to use this larger element down here at the bottom. And let's pull this guy off here. And this is going to be my focal element. So I'm gonna pop that right down here in the center, although it could also very easily be die cut. So keep that in mind there too. Okay, so I have my embossing powder jar open, a different piece of folded paper. Let me find one so that I don't get my gold and my clear embossing powders um, mixed in together. Okay, and then ink this up. And I'm using the Altenew embossing ink for this. So not my pigment ink, but I'm gonna show you another option for that. When we're done with this card, I've got all sorts of tricks up my sleeve today. 
I'm excited to be with you guys. Okay, and I always like to do two rounds with embossing because inevitably you just really want to make really, really sure, and it's hard when it's clear. Okay, so move those aside and get my next piece of scrap paper. Same process as before. You guys know the drill with embossing. Many of us have done embossing for a long time. There may be some embossing newbies out there, though, which I love because I love when people see this process for the first time. Okay, so I can see that I've got some stray powder bits on here, which often happens. So I'm just going to come in with a dry, small paintbrush and sort of shimmy off any of those extra bits. Now this happens happens a lot. It happens often when um, the oils from your finger when, of your fingers gets onto the cardstock. And that's that can be tricky to manage because we do handle our cardstock and paper often, don't we? So it's just something to keep in mind. But a fine tip paintbrush will really help. Just kind of shimmy away any of those little stray particles. If there are any in like really tight areas that are hard to get with the with the um, brush that's got bristles, a toothpick also works. So I feel like a surgeon coming in here with all detail bits. And then just a gentle tap. I'll set that aside and funnel back in my all meaning embossing powder back into the jar. Okay, so that and then just quickly clean off my stamp here and then we can heat set and then do some coloring. Okay, so got that cleaned and put this off to one side again working on my mat and I will do some heat setting quickly and then we'll do some coloring. Okay, so here we go. Beautiful gold. I think this is just super simple, super easy to do. I see a little bit that I still need to heat set, so hang on. Okay, there we go. It's always good to do the kind of tilt and twist um, trick so that you make sure that everything is completely melted. So, oh, Janine, you're asking, uh, why don't I prepare my paper with powder before I stamp? Well, you can definitely do that. I actually don't happen to have any. I think it's cornstarch corn starch powder that, that people often use. I don't happen to have any. I've found that um, just doing a quick shimmy with a... a dry paintbrush does the trick and also just being aware of where I've got my hands all over my cardstock. But I know that um, using some of the powder really does work for other folks. So, you know, kind of like whatever works best for you. So if you've um, found that that has been successful, then maybe I should give that a try too. So thanks for that tip. Okay, so I'm going to start coloring in my flower again with the leaves here too. Um, I'm going to be working with Dew Drops, which is a really pretty um, light blue. And then I'll come in with a little Mountain Mist. 
I get some of those colors going and da, 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 let's go back to Limeade. I can't resist. I love this color combination. I think that's super pretty. Now let's take a look here. If you're wondering about just coloring in the image, let's just take a little bit of color and just kind of scribble it in here. So this is possible, but it's also, I'm finding, not so easy to get around some of those embossed areas. So I really would find that, especially with some finer details, that it's going to be easier to come in, as we did before, with a wet brush. And I need to blot this off a little bit with my... With my uh, disgraced dish rag, I've got all of my dish towels kind of got worn out all at the same time, which means that they graduate or they get demoted, depending on how you think of it, into the craft room. So I've got some really disreputable looking dish towels, but they've moved into being craft room rags, which you can always use. Okay, so again, just painting in here, going over those lines as before because again, this is creating a really nice resist. Okay, so that's with the lighter of the colors. Then let's add in some of the mountain mist. Blue and gold, of course, just always work beautifully together. So you kind of can't go wrong with that color combination. Okay. So a bit more color on here, and then I can do my leaves. Christine, you use talc on your on your um, cardstock before you do your embossing. Like what, like baby powder? Is that what you're using? I'd be curious to know. I may have to go to the go to the drugstore tomorrow and see what I can find. Okay, and then come in and add some of this beautiful green. So again, just think about with this gold embossing, you could have absolutely left it with just the gold and away you go um, for a really clean and simple kind of classic design. But you could also, you know, make that flower red, make it pink. You've got all of those colors in your watercolor set, so you're spoiled for choice. You could even do, as I'm, I often like to do, um, some kind of vintage like um, brown flowers. So um, the ones that remind me of, I, I could swear that my grandmother had like sheets with this sort of um, little brown, kind of like a calico pattern of flowers. And I always think of when I think of some of the um, all to new, like the more vintage floral motifs. So then there we go. We've got our painted in image quick and easy to do. And of course, you've got lots of different variety um, options on there. Now, for my finished card, you can see here, I've also edged around the outside with my embossing ink pad and then added some gold around there. Now, the thanks on here, again, one of my favorite dies. What I've done here, I won't demonstrate it for you, but I will show it to you. Um, this is this is a nice way of getting something that totally coordinates and probably the reason why I have zero left of my rose gold embossing powder because I like to do this. Take a piece of plain white cardstock, just whatever you have on hand, and take your clear ink pad, squash it down really heavily onto your cardstock, and then cover it with your embossing powder and heat set it. So you're going to have the entire surface. Um, heat embossed. Let it cool. It does take a while to cool because you've got a basically molten um, piece of cardstock on there. And then you can take your cutting dies. Let's see if I have one on here. This is a larger one, but you'll get the gist. And pop that down there and then do your die cutting. And that's what I've done to create the thanks on here. So then I have something that totally coordinates in between my floral image, my outside edges, and my sentiment on there. So super duper easy to do. 
So that is our third card. Are we on our third card by now? I think so. Okay, so we've got about 15 minutes and I've got one more that I want to show you. So let's take a look. Here's another one that I want to do. And again, using some more embossing. I like doing embossing because I think not only does it work so well with our water mediums, water-based mediums, but I just think it's a nice, um, a nice classic technique and one that we can use again and again, no matter how long ago it was that you learned how to do that. It always, it always adds something pretty to a card. Okay, so I've got, my, again, my card stock on here. Let's see which flowers I want to use this time. So I've got two that I want to use. I've got, da, 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 I've got this flower again that I'm going to use. I'm gonna put this, uh, let's go across here, set that on there. And then I also want to use this little guy. So I'm gonna turn this around so you can see. It's like a closed up bud. It's such a sweet design and really works nicely either on its own or as like kind of a filler. So let's pop him down. Let's see. I'm not going to use that one. I'm going to use this other one. So I was wondering why they were going in different directions. So I've got another one that's got a similar effect, but he's bending the other way. So here we go. This is the one that's going the direction I want it to. Okay, so I've got these two going this way. Let's see. I'm also going to grab in one of those filler pieces. And da, da, da. I'll have him angled in a bit like so. And again, I plan to have something going across here to cover up where they all meet in the middle. So let's pop that all down. Now, in this case, I'm also going to go back to my clear embossing powder. And I'm going to use the antique gold pigment ink to do my stamping. So this is going to give me not only that raised and beautiful effect that we saw earlier, but it's going to give me the antique gold of this too. So let's take a look. Make sure I've got everything in place here. Once again, make sure to have the lid off and ready to go. So the antique gold is a beautiful gold color. You know, you can just stamp with this and call it good. But again, it really does work nicely for heat embossing as an embossing ink pad. Okay. Pop that down and let's do a second go. And can see some areas that I didn't get perfectly done. Okay. And again, quickly. So this is our last, our last embossing. Get my piece with a clear embossing on here, and then add this on here. Tap that off and funnel this back in. I'm running low on this too. I need that $15 gift certificate. I've got a big shopping list of things that I need, namely embossing powders. Okay, so it's looking maybe a little bit strange at this point, but let's have a look. I'm gonna do some embossing quickly and then we'll see how it turns out.
Okay, so here you can see I've still got the gold, but it is of the um, the inking, the uh, embossing ink that I used, or the pigment ink that I used, but it's toned down a little bit. It's going to have a, a bit of a softer effect. So it gives you, again, another option. So let's grab some color here, and we can start filling in some of the flowers here. Uh, Rose says, I don't think you're going to need foam tape. No, that's for sure. Not for a while, right? I think I'm, I think I'm stocked up. Although, you know what? For those of us who use foam tape, you know that you can actually really go through foam tape quite a lot. I love adding it for just a little bit of um, texture, especially for clean, really clean and simple cards. I find that it just, yeah, adds a bit of style to them. And it also is nice, especially when you're mailing cards. I mail a lot of cards. And um, you want to have some dimension that's still sturdy. You don't have to worry about things falling off or getting squashed in the mail. Okay, so I'm starting off with this yellow. And this one is, let's see, this is lemonade. So I've got some lemonade. Let's add in a bit down here for our smaller one, too and just keep building up so the next color here is fresh lemon you can add in a little bit of this as well just to go along some of these outer edges go along some of the lines and then this is maple yellow so you can see how just painting straight off the tip is super simple to do your watercolor pencils will go a long way, I have to say. Um, colored pencils in general are a good investment. I think way back to when I first started stamping, I know that I had a, a set of colored pencils, and that was what I did most of my coloring in with. And a set of colored pencils will definitely um, be a good addition to your, to your stamping. Okay, so what for green? Let's do something a little darker. This is the Shadow Creek. And get some green in here too. And then I'll show you the finished piece that I've already done and what I did in this area here. Although you could certainly do what I showed you earlier and do another large floral. I just added another die, a die cut. And it's the one of the friend die cuts, the word die cuts that I also like to use a lot. Okay, so all of those little parts and pieces in there are colored in. And so what I've done is added in the word friend. Now the friend is from the Simply Friend die. And I just did the same process with um, using the embossing ink pad to create the colored piece on here and added in a few also a few of the satin white do I have my jar yeah the satin white sequins just in little clusters around here and I've just glued those right on as accent pieces so you can see you have got lots and lots of options with this set the coloring is super fun. So you can go from, let's see, I have to find all of my other cards here. You can go from coloring in with your obsidian black. You can use your pigment, uh, your obsidian black pigment ink as your embossing ink and then do some painting in there. You can also, where did my other one go? Here we go. Do some really clean and classic gold embossing. I think that this this technique is just fantastic and so easy. So mixing in some of your older supplies, nothing in here is new. I think maybe the newest thing that we've had in this entire hour together is the watercolor pencil set because all of the other items I know I've had in my stash for a really long time. So super duper easy to use, a lot of fun. 
great if you're just looking for a little bit of maybe distraction from the world's news and you just want to maybe stamp, emboss, and color in and have some nice card projects to send to some friends. Okay, so I'm going to swap up my camera angle again here. Hold on a sec. And we can see each other again. There we go. So close this. So fantastic that we were able to hang out together for an hour. I think we're just at an hour now. So again, I'll just remind you, it was the botanical garden set that we were playing with today. So here's the stamp set and the coordinating die set, which will help you just create even more dimension with your with your card projects, especially if you use the um, <laughs> the foam tape in there too. I'm going to see how long that lasts me because I have the feeling it is not going to last me as long as I think it will. And then the last thing we were working with, let me pop the top back on here, are the woodless watercolor pencils. Um, really nice to work with, beautiful pigments, beautiful colors. And of course, being woodless means that you don't have that um, casing around on a traditional wooden colored pencil. So you've really got some nice, basically sticks of, of pigment that you can work either by coloring directly in or as we saw by using your water brush or paintbrush to just pick up the color from the tip. So hopefully this has been a fun and inspiring evening or afternoon for you or morning, depending on where you are. So thank you again so, so much for joining us tonight. And thank you to Mary for being the magic behind the Alt New badge. Thank you, Mary, for keeping up with us and answering any questions I might have missed. So if you have not already, do be sure to um, share tonight's live. While we're still live, we have another maybe minute or so, and then I'm going to head off to bed and hopefully you will have a re wonderful rest of your day. So again, I appreciate your time very, very much today and hope to catch you again for another live in the weeks to come. So do take care and I will see you all later. Good night.